Good morning everybody, welcome to Morning Prayer here from St Mag's Church Community. You're very welcome. We're going to be waiting for people to come online and uh, then we'll begin our prayers in just a moment. Hope you're doing well this morning. I'm just reaching across to grab something. Morning Pete. Your first one on this morning. Welcome. Hey Cliff. Oops, I'm on a wobbly bit this morning. There we go. Morning Virginia and Pauline. Welcome. Hope you brought a cup of coffee. Joe just um, said to me, have you have you read this morning's lecture so far? Because normally I do, or have you listened to it? And I hadn't, but I've just had a quick flick through and it looks really, really good. Good morning, Anne. Anne, still praying for you. I hope you're on the mend. Uh, good morning, John and Hilary and Jane and yeah, quite it's bright. It's not as not as hot as it was yesterday, but uh, lovely. Sorry for the enormous gulping sound. How are you doing this morning? Are the things we can be praying for for you today things that uh, are on your heart? People, other people that we can be praying for. Good morning, Joe, Pete. Glad it's a little bit cooler there. It's cooler here. It did rain in the night, to be honest. And uh, so it's just a perfect temperature here now. It's beautiful. This has, to, I ha this has been the nicest weather-wise spring and summer in my memory. Uh, I don't know about what you think. But then I don't remember childhood summers that much, just because I don't remember that much from childhood. Um, Sad but true. Morning Magdalena. Morning Anne and Keith and Rachel. Well, we'll begin in just a moment. If you've got a cup of tea or coffee, we'll have a simultaneous sip. Um, don't always remember to do it, but seeing as I've got it, here we go. good coffee. Let's pray shall we. Father God as we begin this day with you wherever we find ourselves on our walk with you whether we're people just watching uh, out of curiosity or people who have watched pretty much everyone since we since the start of lockdown. Lord I pray that each one of us will know you close that you will encourage and challenge and strengthen our hearts today. Today is Thursday the 13th of August. It was on this day 293 years ago that an outpouring of the Holy Spirit came upon a community uh, of Moravian Christians at Hernhut, a modern day Ger in modern day Germany. It's a movement that launched. It's a moment that launched a movement that changed the world. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still. To recenter my scattered senses on the presence of God. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are present with us now. You're, you're God present with us. A gift after Jesus ascended to be with you, Father. But as we hear the story of a particular moment of outpouring of your presence, give us hunger and thirst for more of your presence in our lives, in our church and in our bay, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Holy Spirit, fill me today as you filled the Moravians all those years ago in Hearn Hut. Ignite in me a passion for prayer and a fearless ambition for the gospel. Let me learn from their example that I may follow in their footsteps. Amen. I choose to rejoice in God's unfailing love today, from generation to generation, joining with the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 100. It says this, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Father, thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your faithfulness to each generation. Thank you that your kingdom is always growing. Give us eyes and expectations of faith. Not only believing what we see on the news, what we see in social media, but having the bigger perspective of your kingdom and your faithfulness and the promises of scripture. The great Moravian Pentecost of, of the 13th of August 1727 ignited a prayer meeting which continued non-stop for more than a hundred years. How awesome is that? That's just brilliant. And it propelled missionaries like rockets aflame with the gospel to the ends of the earth and launching the modern missions movement is a movement worth remembering and celebrating each year. A moment, I should say. It had begun five years earlier when a bedraggled band of refugees on the, arrived on the country estate of a guy called Count Zinzendorf at Berthelsdorf, Berthelsdorf, yeah, that's right, in Saxony fleeing for their lives from fierce religious persecution in their homelands of Bohemia and Moravia across the Austrian Alps to the south. Zinzendorf offered them extraordinary hospitality, offer it provoked no doubt by his mustard seed vow to be kind to all people. He permitted the Moravians to settle on his land where they built a village called Hernhut, the Watch of the Lord. What an awesome village name, the Watch of the Lord. But the new community was far from idyllic. For five years they bickered and argued until this day in 1727, when they gathered on in the church and repented before the Lord. Count Zinzendorf himself recorded what happened next. The Saviour permitted to come upon us a spirit of whom we had hitherto not had any experience or knowledge. Hitherto we had been leaders and helpers. Now the Holy Spirit himself took full control of everything and everybody. Some fell to the floor under the power of the Holy Spirit. It was even reported that some of the community working 20 miles away had the same experience at the same time. The example of the Moravians challenges me in many ways. First, I must think about my broken relationships and bad attitudes towards other Christians. Where am I carrying resentment, a critical spirit or unforgiveness? Am I holding too tightly to particular opinions and hurts from the past? Take some time, I'm going to give you some space, take some time to invite the Holy Spirit to search my heart, your heart, and to repent just of those bad attitudes, critical thoughts, particularly towards other brothers and sisters. And Jesus says, by this will men know that you're my disciples, that you have love for one another. 
And I suppose the converse is also true. If you don't love one another, people will not know or trust that you are my disciples. Lord, we are sorry. We're sorry for the times that we've uh, needlessly criticised people, other Christians or other churches, where we took cheap, cheap shots, where we've criticised things without fully understanding. We're sorry. We repent, which means more than just saying sorry. It means actually, Lord, we want to change our the attitude and the orientation of our hearts. It's it's a it's a bigger thing it's changing the direction that we face in and instead of facing away from others help us to face towards them thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy but help us to do more than simply think the right thoughts and say the right words but to actually where needed make amends and to actually begin to work towards uh, the same ends and to pray towards the same goals Lord, we recognise that there are there are sometimes differences. There is certainly variety. Give us wisdom, but give us soft hearts instead of hard hearts. The Moravians gained the nickname Unitas Fraternum, Fratrum, Unitas Fratrum, the United Brethren. The Holy Spirit turned their great weakness into a very great strength. Thinking now of other types of churches, not my own, I pray God's extravagant blessing upon them, asking that we may be brought to complete unity, as it says in John, as Jesus prays in John chapter 17, verse 23. So pray, take a moment to pray. Every church that you can think of right now in these moments, pray for God's blessing upon them. Even if you've had differences in the past, even if you're no longer a part of them, part of forgiveness, part of the journey to freedom and wholeness is that we, I, I believe, is that we pray God's blessing upon them and, and ask that God will bless them more than he blesses us even. That's the kingdom way of things. Lord, we pray that in this season you will provide, richly provide for all their needs, financial and people resources and space. Lord, we pray that you will um, give them great vision, that you'll refresh their leaders where they need refreshing, that you will use them for the establishment of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, that you will bless them in the fruits of their labours, that you will bless their leaders Bless those who behind the scenes keep things working. Bless their administrators. Bless their evangelists, their youth workers. Bless the, um, those in employment who, goes to, who go to the church in the fruits of their work, in their ministry out in the workplace through the week. Lord, we... we bless our brothers and sisters in Christ. Bless them. Perhaps where you're sitting, you can open your hands before the Lord and pause and invite the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh. In Luke, John, uh, Jesus says, you know, even you fathers, even if, you, you know, even if you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. If your son asks for a fish, would you give him a stone? 
Uh, if your son asks for a loaf of bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, would you give him a scorpion or a snake? Can't remember if it's scorpion or snake. And then he says this. If then though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Father, we thank you that not only have you saved us, not only have you welcomed us into relationship with you through the work of your son Jesus, you have poured out your spirit upon us that we can know you and know that we're your children as sons and daughters, know that we're loved by you, be filled with the fruits, with the gifts of the spirit and cultivate the fruits of the spirit because of your work within us. And so we say yes to you today. Will you fill us again with your presence, with your spirit? Lord, I pray that even as people sit um, now and as people watch later, if they've never experienced your love and your presence, that they will begin to experience and know you. Whether that is a felt thing, an experience, or just a deep knowledge within them, Lord, will you fill people either afresh or for the first time with your presence? The gift of your spirit This is a prayer from the, the Catholic Mass for Pentecost, Veni Sancti Spiritus. And you may not come from this tradition, but these words are awesome and they're deeply scriptural. So pray with me. Come Holy Spirit, send forth the heavenly radiance of your light. Cleanse that which is unclean. Water that which is dry. Heal that which is wounded. Bend that which is inflexible. Fire that which is chilled. Correct what goes astray. Grant the reward of virtue. Grant the deliverance of salvation. Grant eternal joy. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your promise of Luke chapter 11, which I, I just read, that the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Father God, please keep filling me with your Holy Spirit throughout this day. Amen. Well, folks, thank you for joining us. We'll just pray in just a second to finish, but I'm just having a quick look through the messages. Ooh. All I can see is my massive nose in the light. Um, Martin, I'm glad to he hear that your mother-in-law is making good progress. I didn't see any other prayer requests. And Martin, I'm trying to remember what your mother-in-law is called. Pete, love your prayer. Father, help me to be a beacon of your light and love more and more each day. Amen to that. Father, we pray for Martin's mother-in-law. Thank you that she's making progress. And we lift to you all the people here that uh, are on our hearts. We continue to pray for them. Pray that you, you, more than anything, they will know your love. They will know you close. They will know your peace. We pray for your healing. Pray for John Knight's wife. Uh, struggling to remember her name, I'm sorry. Uh, for Mount Olive Church, who's really seriously ill many people praying for her at the moment and we ask your healing for her but your blessing and your peace over that church community as we've been praying for unity today we ask you be close to them as a as a family 
And Lord, I, I want to continue to pray for those who lost their lives and their livelihoods and their homes in Lebanon just over a week ago. Lord, just because things don't go out of the headlines doesn't mean that it's no longer important. Lord, we continue to cry out for that nation, for uh, better governance and uh, better use of of finances and, and leadership. Uh, but we ask for your mercy on those poor people who in that moment lost everything. Continue to give us compassionate hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, uh, Angie. Angie and Paul Knight. Thank you. Lord bless Angie today in Rowcroft. May she know the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Yes. Yeah, thank you for your prayers. We're praying for Kev's back, who's had two moles removed. Praying for desperate people who are risking their lives to get here across the channel. You have to ask, you know, to take such a risk, what are you, what are you running away from? Uh, Lord, please, will you have great compassion on those people who uh, are seeking a better life, understandably, in our country and in countries around Europe. Lord, we pray for Kev for continued um, for healing for him, for um, for rest and for healing on his back. I also pray for those anxious students who are getting their results today. Father, be close to them. I pray that they will have a, a kind of a, a good sense of perspective, rejoicing for good results, but a sense of perspective if their results aren't quite what they wanted. May they know your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining us. It's been lovely, really good to join with you. Um, yes, thank you. Um, prayed for we just prayed for Paul Knight's wife, um, for Angie. And um, I think we'll call that a day and I'll see you soon. It's possible that I might pop up on uh, on Tinternet in a moment down in church as I try something new. Uh, so if that's the case, you can join on, you can log in and, and help me because I'll be asking if you can hear and see stuff. But, um, but don't hang on because that might not happen, um, it, but it may do. So um, please pray for Paula. Yeah, I need a bit of an update on Paula. Thank you, Rosie. I haven't heard for a day or two. Paula had a bit of a funny turn and, and fell just last week. Um, so where um, she's, yeah, need a bit of an update. God bless. Enjoy your day.